Proton Wallet has quickly become a household name for email, VPNs, calendars, cloud storage, and now Bitcoin wallets. Yes, that's correct. Proton has made an easy Bitcoin wallet that checks majority of the boxes. My name's Darren. I've helped thousands of people use Bitcoin. We're going to cover what Proton Wallet is, what's needed, setting it up, using it, pros and cons, security, recovery, and at the end I'm going to try to describe who Proton Wallet would be the best for. Proton Wallet is only available through a Proton account. It can be accessed through browsers, iOS, or their Android app. I have a really deep dive on the different ways you can hold Bitcoin, but Proton Wallet kind of sits in the middle between a custodian, like a Coinbase that holds all of your Bitcoin on your behalf, and a, a physical wallet you have to buy or software that you have to download the source code to use. Still that perfect middle ground where it's able to secure Bitcoin, where you totally have control of it, and you're able to send and receive Bitcoin. So let's just cover the basic positives of Proton Mail. Number one, it is open source. It's also end-to-end -end encrypted, and we can trust this because it's open source. You would say right away, why would I use a wallet account that's associated with my email? That company is going to see all my transactions. Well, according to them, they're not. It's encrypted. We can use that open source to prove it. Obviously, I have not, don't have that technical skill, so do your own research. They're Bitcoin only. Being Bitcoin only really allows you to focus on the best user experience for your Bitcoin, a lot of feature-rich tools for Bitcoiners to use. You can send Bitcoin to anyone in the network. You can also use your Proton Mail account to send Bitcoin via your Proton email. Recovery is super easy. It's literally just behind your email password, hopefully 2FA if you've had that, as opposed to getting that recovery seed, uploading it to a wallet, typing it into a new computer, hoping that that derivation path is set, and remembering to store those 12 words where they are, as opposed to just having your Proton account, email, password, 2FA to recover your Bitcoin. And ultimately, it's really easy to use, has a great UI. I would say pretty foolproof for the average person. Negatives right off the bat, it only supports Bitcoin on-chain. It doesn't support Layer 2 and Lightning. With online payments getting bigger, uh, a lot of people are looking for an all-in-one solution where they can have Lightning payments as well as Bitcoin on-chain payments with it. The cloud-based hot wallet, It's the security of it is behind your email, password, and your 2FA. So though recovery is easy, I think this is probably not the best place to secure your generational wealth. So I'm gonna walk you through a tutorial of it now. First, you're going to need a Proton Mail account. There's no way around this that I have found. Once you get through that, accept the terms and conditions. You can open this on a browser. You can download it on iOS or Android. I'm gonna show you on the iOS app. When you first enter your Proton account, you are going to be greeted by your transaction page, the amount you have, and at the bottom there is an explore wallet. So we have a Bitcoin guide, what is Bitcoin, all information about Proton Wallet, how to accept Bitcoin via email, and the current price of Bitcoin. So this wallet is ready to receive as soon as you set it up on your account. The next step would be, I would recommend securing your wallet. So under secure wallet, one, we're going to back up our Proton account. This is through the Proton settings. Once you back up your Proton account, the next step is to back up this wallet seed phrase. It's going to give you a warning that this seed phrase, if anyone was ever going to hold of it, they would have your Bitcoin. So this is really important. You're going to press view wallet. You're going to insert your password to your Proton account account and then you'll see 12 words. We're going to write these down on paper, never ever put them into a computer. Once that is done, it will bring you to the next checklist, which is setting up a two-factor authentication. Because your Bitcoin wallet is behind your Proton email, all that secures it is just your email address and password. So if somebody got in that, they could have access to your Bitcoin. So they highly recommend having two-factor authentication, another security feature to ensure nobody's ever able to get into your wallet. So after you've taken care of security, I'll give you a quick wallet tour. So by default, your account comes with um, two accounts within your wallet. So your total wallet will have a balance for all of your accounts. However, you're going to see a primary account, which is if you're receiving Bitcoin on chain. You can see here, you can change the local currency, turn on the ability to receive via email. But by default, they will 
have it in different accounts because of privacy. Now you can turn this feature off if you choose and just have one account or you can have multiple accounts. You can also create another account if you wanna keep all this separate for accounting purposes. For example, I could call this one business income and I can create a wallet account. Now I'm gonna have three different account types that I can store under the wallet. If we go back to the settings, you can even change and if it receives via email, you can also have it receive via multiple emails if you've set that up in your account. So you could create multiple Proton emails like receivables at your wallet or payments at my wallet and it can go into different accounts. As I said, this is ready to receive. All you have to do is press receive and this will show you your receive address to send Bitcoin to. Always copy and paste or use a QR code. Never type this out if you're gonna be sending Bitcoin here. You can also generate a new address. So this Bitcoin wallet has multiple addresses associated with it. It's recommended you use a new address each time you deposit for privacy and you can choose what account you're receiving to. All right, next up is I'm gonna send Bitcoin to this account. Now I'm gonna be using my phone where I'm sending it from. So I'm going to be scanning this QR code. And then I'm gonna put in the amount that I'm wanting to send. Now that I've sent a Bitcoin transaction, the transaction is currently in progress. So the transaction will be received as pending when you first get it because you are in an auction system against all the other transactions that were just sent on the network. You can view this transaction and add a note to yourself of where it came from. You can even attach it to a sender you can even view it on a blockchain, which is the great feature of Proton. So you can actually see this transaction, all the details regarding it, and verify it yourself. Now that it has been deposited, you can see it on your account here. You can even search for previous transactions you had from specific users. I think both the search and the ability to add it to contacts is a really unique feature that I haven't seen in other wallets. So to send Bitcoin, you are going to choose first what account it's coming from. You can see I have a balance in my primary account. I have no other balances in my secondary accounts because I never funded them as they're all separate balance. So you're gonna choose what account it's coming from. So as an example, if you had three accounts, you would have to do three transactions to move all the Bitcoin off. of. Next, you can actually, it'll populate all of your contacts in your Procon account. I assume if they didn't have a Proton wallet, it would prompt them to open the Proton wallet to accept the Bitcoin as an example. If you don't want to use a contact, typically you'd be using a Bitcoin address or where to send to. We can scan that address where we want it to go and it populates this address. Once it's scanned, we can just press continue. And then we're gonna be brought to how much Bitcoin we wanna send. You can choose in a dollar de denominated, Satoshi, Sats denominated, or any other denomination if you choose. There's also a send all button, which will send the entire amount. The entire amount is of my wallet is $20, but only I can send 18 because of the network fees. And we're gonna see that if I press review. So here's the network fees, and you can see the advanced options. Unfortunately, it doesn't show you in Sats per Vbyte, it only shows you in dollar options. So if I choose low priority, I'm not really sure what it's going to be. And you can see it's actually all the exact same right now. So I'm not exactly sure how they calculate the fees at this point. Send a note for yourself where it's gonna go and I will press confirm and send. So now it says your Bitcoin is on your way. Now we're back in that auction system where we're essentially with all the other transactions saying we're wanting to move Bitcoin from my Proton wallet to the other Bitcoin destination. And you can just press done. If it was sent to a Proton user, they would get an email from that. And you can see that this is in progress. One interesting thing about Proton Mail is you can actually boost the priority of this. So you can change the network fee if you choose and press boost transaction. This is a RBF. So this is important if you ever paid a low fee and your transa transaction may be stuck for a few days. And the total wallet is now empty. Now I just wanna cover some advanced positive features for the true Bitcoiner. You can export this wallet to other software. So if you wanna to upgrade to a hardware wallet or another Bitcoin software, you can just take that seed phrase, upload it, and all of your accounts will be able to be regenerated in another software. You can import a wallet. So if you have a wallet that's like a hot wallet just sitting around that maybe you want to get all the features that you saw in here, you can actually take that those seed words and import it into this Proton wallet. I think a really big positive that nobody ever talks about is having the ability to have multiple accounts across multiple devices. If I ever wanted to take 
the Bitcoin that's in my Bitcoin wallet on my phone, I have to upload that seed phrase to uh, another computer or another phone, having the risk of typing in my seed phrase where your Bitcoin can be taken. In this situation, I could access my Proton wallet from my phone, from my email, all at the same time. I could go across the world, log into a computer from my Proton account and get access to it. You can have multiple accounts. for So for accounting purposes, this is great. They change the derivation path in the back end for you, allowing your account types to have different balances all within one wallet that's able to be recovered together. You can add notes on transactions and even connect them to specific contacts. I think this is a huge feature that not a lot, a lot of wallets have where you can kind of use it as an accounting software to put notes on what each transfer was. And then they also have replace by fee. So when you send a transaction, you can actually bump that fee and replace the transaction all with a click of the button. Majority of hardware wallets, it's really hard to do so. Other hot wallets in the industry, only a few have this feature just built in. So this is a great advanced tool if you're ever in a situation where your fee was stuck for a day or two. Now the advanced negatives of the Proton wallet is there's no coin control. So when you go to send a Bitcoin, there's no way to do UTXO management. I have a whole video on UTXOs, why it might be best privacy wise to select different UTXOs, accounting wise to do so. There's no customization in the fee. Though you can choose high, medium, or low transaction priority, there's no way to put in your own SAT amount per V-byte, which I think is a miss. And ultimately it is a essentially cloud-based hot wallet. I don't think this is a place to store your generational wealth. Ultimately, we're trusting a company like Proton. You have a lot of data associated with this. Though they can't see your transactions or anything, I guarantee they can see you that you have multiple sessions. Lord knows what other data they can track, like your IP address. If you're paying for Proton wallet, they can see your billing address, your credit card information. So a lot of this, though it may not be tied directly to your transactions, they could maybe see that you are doing some Bitcoin stuff. I don't think it's really the perfect privacy solution. Even though it says it's encrypted, we've seen Apple, for example, in the UK, roll back their encryption. This could happen to Proton for them to use that wallet. Now, who is this for? I think overall, this is a great wallet to store anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to a thousand dollars in Bitcoin. If you want something that's easy to get started, straightforward to understand, the probably easiest recovery, which is just like, make sure you have your email, password, 2FA set. You don't have to worry about really 12 words. You have that as a backup, but you don't have to worry about recovering that into a new wallet, buying a new device, downloading new software. Literally, it's all there for you to access to, across your Proton account. And ultimately, I think it's really easy to use. It feels like this wallet was made by Bitcoiners who really understand Bitcoin and really understand what's needed in the industry. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Happy to help. And I have other videos on my channel if you want tutorials on other software wallets, hardware wallets, how to store Bitcoin, UTXO management. I have a full list on my website if you want to see them listed out there. I don't like YouTube. And uh, thanks for watching.